Hello everyone. So today I've been asked to do a follow-up lesson on persuasive techniques. So we are going to be looking at some techniques that that you can use when you're writing to argue or persuade. And I found a real good <clears throat> example of a range of different techniques that will make your persuasive writing that more convincing and persuasive so let's begin so the first one i would like to look at is alliteration and alliteration is the repetition of consonant sounds or blends so for example Spanish sunset sweeps across the sand, sea, and sangria. And of course, it is a bit of a tongue twister. In this example, you can see the repetition of the S's. This is also an example of sibilance. The second one is emotive language. Now, emotive language is any word or phrase that appeal to the, the reader's emotions. So this example here is, the attack was vicious, cruel, and fervent with horrifying results. Now, the emotive words in this example would be vicious, cruel, fervent, horrifying, and also attack would be very emotive. The next one is opinions. Now your opinion is an idea that isn't factual, right? It isn't factual, it is just your own beliefs. So this example is, I believe that, or you could say in my opinion, or I think that, or I feel. So if you really look at the examples, you can see that they're all about belief or what you think or what you feel. It's not a factual thing, even though some opinions can be factual, but a lot of times opinions aren't. Humor. No, the tip is that this doesn't have to be laugh out loud. So it's, you don't have to have a laugh out loud moment when you put humor in your writing. It could be sarcasm. It could be puns. It could just be an amusing story or a witty comparison, for example. So when you think of um, putting humor into your persuasion, a good way to do that is by using sarcasm or satire. Statistics. Now, statistics are any data. So we could have percentages, we could have data, we could have numbers. So it is going to be focused on your data, your numerical figures, and it is very factual. So 57% of people believe in aliens. Nine out of 10 people eat baked beans at least twice a week. So the statistics in there would be the 57% and nine out of 10. Rhetorical questions. Now, this is a question that does not require an answer. The, re the writer does not require the reader to answer this question because the writer is going to um, put the answer in um, the persuasion. So for example, don't you crave success? Would you want a life of poverty and loneliness? And of course, the answer to that or the answers to those questions would be in your persuasive argument. Anecdotes are amusing personal stories. When I was a child, so they can begin with when I was a child or just yesterday or last night or last time this happened to me. So all of these things are quite personal and they tell a story. Direct address, so we're looking at or pronouns you, something that directly addresses the audience. So you know this means um, you know this needs to end, so you need to help us now. So it immediately gets your audience on side. 
triplets or a list of three or patterns of three, they're all the same. So three words that you basically, they mean the same thing. So you're emphasizing the same idea three times. Let's look at the examples. London is a vibrant, diverse, and exciting place. So there, your triplets would be vibrant, diverse, exciting. And the next one, friendly, loyal, intelligent. A dog is the perfect pet. So friendly, loyal, and intelligent would be your triplets first person so we're looking at the pronouns i my me so my life's great because i work so hard so here you can see the pronouns my and i rebuttals so rebuttals are basically your counter argument so anyone who claims that unemployment is easy is wrong it's not easy. It's tough. So you think about what the opponent's arguments would be. What would the people who disagree with your point say? And you rebut it by addressing it, but then rebutting it with your point. And this makes your argument stronger because you can prove that what anyone that disagrees with what you're saying have to say is wrong. Hyperbole is another word for exaggeration. So when you're exaggerating, you're really stretching the truth. You're really telling a lie, white lie and emphasizing your points. So the example is shampoo doesn't get better than this. Your hair's left with an infinite dazzling shine. So the exaggeration here is that this shampoo is the best there is, the best ever. Now imperatives, another word, what I tell my students is that our imperatives are our bossy verbs. So they're very bossy and you can see this in the example. So get out your wallets hand over some money and make a difference. So we have three imperative verbs there, get, hand, and make. And they're all bossy verbs telling you to do something. They're command words. Next one is using punctuation for effect. So you can use your punctuations to further your arguments and make your arguments more convincing. And remember, it is we're looking at the techniques that you can use to in your arguments and in your persuasion to make your writing more effective. So the example is there's only one thing to do. And here you see the use of the colon. Try harder. We have an ellipsis. If you don't, well, you fail exclamation mark so it's quite to the point and emotive in a way as well you can also vary your sentence length for effect now the example there is there's a tip as well so the tip is try using longer more complex sentences to convey the intensity of or the extent of something. So you know that we use short sentences for pace to create tension, it's to the point, but then your longer sentences create more effect because they're going to, not that they're more effective than short sentences, but they give more detail. So if you really want to be convincing, it's in the detail, isn't it? For example, it's beauty or horror right and also using single word sentences for impact so you're using your longer sentences um your more complex sentences to compl um to convey the intensity of something and also the detail and then the shorter sentences for impact and we, you know that you can use hollow phrases which are single word sentences so if you think about it how can you um, use these words for impact in your sentences to create that 
persuasion. Now, some um, giving examples as well is another way to create that impact within your writing. So one example is, for instance, an illustration of this is, so these are just some sentence stems that can help you. And a case in point is that. So these are useful sentence stems that I have um, given my students to use and they do make your writing that much more persuasive and convincing. Repetition, the tip is, this could be repetition of the same word or it could be repetition of a similarly structured phrase. So when we use repetition, repeating a word or a phrase, it doesn't have to be uh, just repeating a word. You know, we know of the famous speech where they used education, education, education. We know of the famous speech where um, he used, I have a dream and that ran throughout. And of course, I did a persuasive lesson on Martin Luther King's um, speech. I have a dream and I will put that link somewhere for you so you can go back and see that one as well so contrastive pairs and we know a contrast is opposite so you have opposites opposite pairs of words in the same paragraph or sentence an example is if you know something is wrong then you need to make it right right so the whole idea about right and wrong wrong right that's the contrastive pair of words wrong and right and then the next the next example is while some live in luxury others die in poverty so your contrastive pairs luxury and poverty can you think of a few to incorporate in your writing please comment below and let me know which ones you're going to try today to just give your writing that much more spice, that much more persuasion. The next one is exclamatory style. So you're going to use an exclamatory style of writing. And we know that and if you use exclamatory sentences or ex or exclamation, it's just writing your sentences and ending it with an exclamation mark to show that emotion. So visit France, it's astounding. Or the hotel was the foulest place ever. So you get that great emotion at the end. Top tips. What are the top tips that I would like to leave you with? When we are writing to uh, argue or persuade, you need to plan your work. It's more effective if it's well organized with a beginning, a middle and a conclusion. And we know that for anything we're doing, we need to have a beginning, we need to have a middle and we need to have a, an ending. So take those five minutes to plan your work it just needs five minutes to plan what's going to how you're you going to start what are the points you're going to talk about and how you're going to end also think about your audience and your purpose who are you writing for and what are you asked to write is it a letter is it a speech is it an article if it's a speech then you know meant to be said so when you, we are assessing it, we're looking at how effective it is as a speech. If it's an article, then that's a written format, isn't it? It's not made to be presented. So how are you going to structure that and use the techniques that are appropriate to the style and to the purpose and to the audience? Well, we've come to the end of this tutorial. As always, I'm happy that you could join me. I'm happy that you took the time to stop here with me and go through writing to argue and persuade. That's what we looked at today. Why not? Let me know what you'd like me to look at in the next one. Bye for now. Peace and love. There. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.